Hey everybody, uh, George of the Jungle here, and this uh, geometry lesson is on proving angle pair relationships, um, section 2.7 in our geometry book. But for now, let's do this board problem. All right, if uh, angle one is congruent, or is equal to 90, sorry, and the measure of angle two is equal to 90, then the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. Well, that one's a substitution property for me on that one right there, substitution property. I noticed your book uh, said it was a transitive property on this, and I disagree. Uh, transitive property would be, you know, watch my cursor right here, if angle 1 was right here equals 90, here's the 90 over here, and then if angle, I'm sorry, if 90 equals 2, can you see the zigzag that it will go? This 90 and this 90 go in this one. If 90 equals 2, then this 1 over here would equal this 2. So 1 to 90, and then down here 90 to 2, then 1 would be the 2. That would be transitive property. If it doesn't do that zigzag thing, call it substitution property on that. All right, but uh, I like substitution. So if uh, segment AB is perpendicular to segment BC, so uh, I think here's at segment AB right here. Okay, segment BC right here. Perpendicular lines form right angles. So this one is just perpendicular lines always make a right angle right there. So that's the reason on that. Perpendicular lines form right angles. Okay, if uh, segment FG is congruent to segment RS, then the length of FG is equal to the length of RS. That's just definition of congruency. Okay, something like that. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Proving angle pair relationships. Here's the first. This is a theorem, you guys. All right angles are congruent. Well, if they're right angles, they're equal to 90, so 90 equals 90. So like the board problem, they're congruent. All right angles are congruent. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take care of this proof right here. So pause it right here if you're watching this. So you can write this stuff down. Go ahead and do that. All right, when you're done pausing, you guys, here we go. Uh, okay, what's the first statement right here? We got, uh, looks like segment AB. Whoops, I think this is AB down here. I'm sorry. I should have put an AB in there. Let's do that. Let's put segment AB. So, uh, segment uh, A. It's going to go right there. Sorry, you guys. Segment A, and we'll put B right here. And then C goes up on top. Here's segment C, D. Okay, and then D's over there. All right. All right. Sorry about this, you guys. I thought I had that. All right, so uh, so given uh, AB is perpendicular to BC segments and segment DC is perpendicular to segment BC, uh, prove that angle B and angle C are congruent. Okay, always your first step of a proof is the given information. So this stuff right here just goes right here. Okay, now remember, perpendicular lines form right angles. So where are the right angles right here? They're right there at, uh, at the, whoops, I forgot the letters again right there. They're right there at those letters right there. I wonder if I can copy this. Can I do that? You can let me do that. Sorry. Nope, not going to let me do that. All right, so A, B, and B, C. So there's a right angle right here and a right angle right there. So say angle B is equal to angle C. Okay, so angle B and angle C are right angles. Sorry, because perpendicular lines form right angles. Okay, and don't forget B is right here. Uh, B is right there and C is up there. Okay, sorry about this you guys. This, I should have had this done before All right, and then so perpendicular. So now we have this right here uh, Angle B and angle C are right angles because of the perpendicular lines are making these right angles right there And look and it's just my last step right here So I know that this is going to go right here angle B is congruent to angle C and the reason angle B is congruent to angle C Is because all right angles are congruent right there. That's what you put right there. All right angles are congruent Okay, that's not too bad, is it? Okay, right angles are congruent. All right, that's a pretty straight up proof, you guys. All right, how about this? Uh, if two angles are supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then they're congruent. So draw that picture. And then if this angle is supplementary to this angle and this angle is supplementary to this angle, then angle one is congruent to angle three. If they're both supplementary to the same angle, they're congruent to each other. Same with complementary. Two, angle, two angles complementary to the same angle or congruent angles are congruent to each other. So if 4 is congruent to 5 and 6 is congruent to 5, then 4 must be congruent to, I'm sorry, if 4 is complementary to 5, sorry, and 6 is complementary to 5, then 4 and 6 would be congruent to each other. Okay, and that's what that says right there. All right, two, if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Remember, linear means line. So if they make up a straight line, then these two guys add up to 180, which means they're supplementary. Okay, so uh, that's all that means is they're supplementary. 
Vertical angles are congruent. Okay, I think you guys knew that already. Uh, so this angle right here equals this angle, and this angle here equals this angle right there. All right, let's try some of these. Find the measure of each angle in the diagram. Okay, we've got this figure right here. Remember, we've got two lines. Each line makes up 180. All right, you don't have to find X and Y. Some of these pictures, they have you find X and Y, and if they did, I would draw that straight line right there. I would add these two angles up to be 180, and these two angles up to be 180 to find your X and Y. But this one just says find each measure. So what I'm going to do is add these guys up to 180 and figure out what Y is. And once I know what Y is, 10 times that will get me whatever that is. This angle would then be equal to this angle because they're vertical angles. And then this angle would be supplementary to this angle because they're, they're uh, linear pairs. And whatever this angle is, that's what this angle is right there. All right, so I'm going to go 13y plus 11 plus 10y equals 180. 33y plus 10y is 13y. I'm going to subtract uh, 11 and get 169. And 13 goes into 169, 13. Okay, so now I'm going to do uh, plug in 13 right there. And I find out that this angle equals 130. So this angle is going to be 130. This one's going to be 50 because these two guys have to add up to 180. 50 plus 130 is 180. And then so if that's 50, this guy's 50. So there you go. Piece of cake. All right, let's try one more of these. Okay, so here, um, uh, if I did the straight line right here and did these guys, this has a Y in it and this has an X in it. And this has a Y and this has an, or an X here and a Y here. So by doing the straight line, that one's not going to work. But check this out, you guys. These two guys are equal because they're vertical angles and those are both Y's. Or these two guys are equal and they're vertical angles because they're both X's. So I'm going to use the vertical angles. I like the smaller number, so I'm going to use the Y's right here. So I'm going to just put 5Y plus 5 equal to 7Y minus 9. And then here I'm going to go minus 5Y from the 7Y and get 2Y. Here I'm going to go plus 9 to the 5 to get 14. So I get 14 equals 2Y. And divide by 2 and I get Y equals 7. Then I'll plug Y equals 7 in right there. 5 times 7 plus 5. Okay, 5 times 7 plus 5 is 40. So if that's 40, that's 40, which means uh, for this straight line gets me 180. This is going to have to be 140 because 40 plus 140. And so that means this one's going to be 140. Okay, there you go. All right, if you're in my geometry class, I would have you guys working on that assignment. And thanks for your patience on this, you guys.